730-92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5, audio and video live on RTC Channel 4, and yes, indeed. Good morning, Scott. Good morning again, hey, Tom. Hey, Scott's back in the studio. And, of course, on your smartphone or Android device, you can download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you happen to be going, which we know today on Friday will be the first Federal Savings Bank where you can say hello to Dick Belcher. Good morning. Good morning. Now, this is Earth Day. Yes, it is. Yes. Plant a tree. Plant or a two. tree, pick up some trash. Right. So, do something for the Earth. That's right. That's right. We got that. You going to do that, Brian? Dig a hole in the so. ground. Sure. I, hope so. I think okay. I'm going to do some recycling today. Uh, okay. Ah, there's a good uh, idea. Sure. Well, let's uh, see, uh, Earth Day started in 1970. Okay. And I think it gets bigger every year. Yeah, it does. More, there's more attention to it. And there is actually, uh, there's some that have this whole week is Earth Week. So. Uh, also a good idea. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's going to be up to about 58 today. We've had Not some too great bad. weather. Not yep. We got a nice rain yesterday, half inch. Actually, we're looking at about 64 today. 64? Yeah. My source said 58. Well, we'll see where the, we'll see where the truth lies, won't we? <laughs> Somewhere in between there, I'm sure. <clears throat> By the way, where you been? I haven't seen you in a month. <laughs> Just gone for a couple weeks, that's all. Jeez. You know. We about uh, didn't make it. Okay, now we've, we've got a new uh, face on the $20 bill. We do. Coming. Right. Coming. Right. Harriet Tubman. Yeah, Harriet Tubman, yes. Tubman. Yeah. Evolution. Good choice. Good choice. What do you think of that? A good choice. Be different, that's for sure. <coughs> okay. <coughs> There's a political answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Trump and Cruz have both been in Indiana. They now. have. Getting ready for a week from yeah. Tuesday. Down that's right. Indianapolis. Right. Hanging out with. Indiana Tyler. may mean something this year for yeah. a change. Yeah. Wouldn't that be exciting? We got Trump to, to visit the fairgrounds. We did. Yeah, I don't know what Cruz did. Yet. He was downtown at uh, Shapiro's Deli. Oh, yeah. He was? Yeah, he was. Okay. He got to pastrami on rye. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> By the way, our son Matt is interviewing him this morning through his morning show at WIBC. Oh, he is? Yes. Can we get it up here? We're going to try. Okay. What time is that going to come? I out? don't know. Probably already happened. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay. All right. Now, since this is Earth Day and since we have new pictures on the $20 bill, got a little trivia. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Which takes longer to, to decompose in the environment? Plastic bags, plastic beverage bottles, or aluminum cans? Scott knows the answer to that. He's yeah. going to give it to us right at the end of the program. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Or here's another one. Okay. Okay. Who was the last female to be on U.S. paper currency? Is there a multiple choice there? No. Okay. No, you got to do stuff. Doggone. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I really need the multiple choice. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't Melinda. She's not that old, so I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> She's a sweet young thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, this we talked a couple weeks ago about this young man at New Albany, this basketball player by Romeo Rangford. Pretty good guy, pretty good player. Well, this week he got offers from Kentucky, Duke, and Kansas. <laughs> pretty good choices. And that also goes with all previous <laughs> offers that he had from IU and Purdue right. and, and several others. <clears throat> so he, he, he'd be one and out. Yeah, I think so. He go to Can uh, go to uh, Kentucky. That's close home, and he'll be gone. He averaged 29 points this year. Pretty good player. Yeah, nine rebounds per game. Okay, we're happy today to have with us Brian Johnson, head head Fred at the foundation of Fulton County. You had a big announcement this week. We did have a big announcement this week. Tell us about it. Well, we've been talking about um, Lily Endowment gift six matching program for the last 20 months and this year we're able to or um, this week we were able to announce that um, we were successful they Lily offered us 
five hundred thousand dollars in matching funds dollar for dollar matching and at the end of March we were able to meet the goal of raising all five hundred thousand dollars locally so it's really been an exciting exciting time for us right now well uh, congratulations that's a great uh, accomplishment to get out of our county uh, five hundred thousand and uh, uh, and I, I know I was <clears throat> talking to you yesterday you mentioned about the three counties that's involved with you Miami and Stark yes. all three counties got the uh, five hundred thousand yes. yeah each each county was able to raise up to five hundred thousand dollars each and all three counties were successful in, in completing that so all three counties of the northern indiana community foundation um, successfully met the lily's um, lily endowments match offer well that's, <clears throat> that's amazing uh, because uh, the income level of those three counties isn't uh, as glamorous as it might be in some other counties it isn't and it's it's really interesting we look at fulton county in particular that i'm most familiar with and we are a giving county and just looking at some of the numbers um, we had over 600 gifts given during this program um, from over 300 individual donors and businesses and organizations um, and the largest single gift that we got was thirty five thousand dollars so there are a lot of small gifts that made up this total of five hundred thousand dollars and it's really wonderful to see our community come together um, it's after experiencing the giving of our community, I guess I'm not all that surprised that we were successful with this. So, Brian, you mentioned the other day too that uh, with that 500,000, Lily's 500,000. What does that give us in terms of grant money? That turns into an additional forty thousand dollars every year. Excellent um, for projects within Fulton County um, to be able to grant out, and that's and that's something that happens every year. So those monies will be endowed, and that's here forever until and to be put to use for needs within our community, current needs within the community. Perfect. Okay, so, now how, how, did, how did you go about this? How did, you just don't go out and find 300 people that want to <laughs> give money. Well, we talked about it a lot, of course. Um, we worked with um, some previous donors. We have some donors that had created community funds. Um, during the program, we were actually able to create um, 13 new community funds. Um, through the program we had now wait a minute explain what a community fund a is. community fund is a fund that um, donors give us the funds and they tell us they then task our board with the um, task of finding the most current needs in our community okay so those funds are used to make community grants um, supporting community needs the most pressing needs at that moment so. such as what are some that you've done in the past well since we have Melinda here we've granted things to the historical society um, organizations like the compassionate health center um, just a number of, of organizations the Akron Art League is one that comes to mind that has been recently active um, the preschool program that we initiated a few years ago came from those community grant dollars. So um, it, it's something that our board looks at the most current need and is able to address that in a timely manner. So, oh, that's, that, that's great. That's great. It, and, I, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you to everybody that, that gave in some way that helped promote this because this really was a, a community effort and um, it's wonderful to see people come together and support our community and ensure that we have funds in the future to be able to um, support organizations and causes that are critical to our community. Okay, now tell, <clears throat> give us a little background of the Fulton County Foundation and what's your total assets? Well, the Community Foundation was started in Fulton County in 1993. Um, it was one of the original counties with the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, so we're, we're about 22 years old, um, in a couple years we'll be talking about our 25th anniversary. Um, but right now in Fulton County we have um, around $14 million in assets. And between the three Northern Indiana Community Foundation counties, we have um, a little over $31 million in assets. Uh, but here in Fulton County, 14 million. 14 million. That's amazing. It is. It is. That is amazing. It's, it's a tribute to our community amazing number yes okay now what's next 
You've been working <laughs> on this for 14 months, and now what are you going to do? Now, now we need some ideas to grant to. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're accepting grant applications now. Um, that was part of what we were talking about as we go out and encourage folks. Um, our grant applications are available on our website, nicf.org. We're accepting those now. So if somebody has an idea for a project or sees a need in the community, um, we're always happy to talk to people about that. So we, we need some projects that we can grant to and, and help make a difference in our community. Now you do that on an annual basis? We do that on an annual basis. And what's so, the deadline for submitting? Well, this is the first year that there is no deadline. Yeah, so okay. If you have an idea, I, for I like project. to have papers like that at college. No <laughs> yes, yes. So this is a little bit of a learning process, but um, in the past we've had a deadline usually late September, early October, okay. and so we've noticed that there's times when an organization maybe this time of year has a project coming sure. up, and we say, well, we can't help you because our deadline isn't until October. So now we can. I know you granted a lot to Akron Little League and things like that, yes. and that all falls yes. into that category yes, too. Yes, that, that does as well. Sure. So. We're speaking to Brian <coughs> Brian Johnson this morning, who's uh, the uh, executive. I'm the, I'm the, no, I'm the director of development. Jay Albright is the executive director okay. of the right. Northern Indiana. But County. you're Fulton County. I'm Fulton County. You're Fulton so, County. Yeah. How long have you been with uh, the uh, foundation? About nine years now. So wow. It's been, been a good time. <laughs> well, you I, do, you do. I enjoy it. Well, we get to work with a lot of good people. Well, obviously you enjoy it and you've been very, very successful at it. And uh, congratulations on uh, making the goal. Yes, well, keep up the good work. And thank you to everybody for helping us make that goal. You bet. Okay, the Fulton County Conservation Club is giving away 400 trees to Fulton County residents at 9 a.m. April 30th at Prairie Edge. Nature Park. Yeah, they do that on an annual basis. Every That's a nice year, thing. Go out there. You bet. Now, when you, if you take some of those trees, treat them kindly. Exactly. You've got to keep the roots moist and pro uh, plant them properly. Don't take them home and throw them down in the garage. You know, <laughs> they won't grow there. They won't <laughs> grow. Yeah. Cast and school cheerleaders are selling bulk landscape mulch. Cost is thirty-five dollars per yard. Pickup trucks can be loaded evenings, weekends, or by appointment. The first house south of Caston. Okay, good deal. Go by there. You got a big. There's a big pile there. So, little fundraiser for them. Uh, that uh, also at, at our library Tuesday at six o'clock is a autism workshop. Right. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on the autism, and uh, they they'll. Tell you the early signs and uh, early actions that you we'll have that gentleman on the air too. Uh, I think it's about ten o'clock on Tuesday thereabouts with uh, Tim Rowe from the library. So okay, we'll be talking about that as well. Milestones. Okay. Queen, ninety. Yes, yesterday. Yeah. Queen's ninety and Prince died. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that correlation, but you're right. <laughs> You can get that? I got it now. Yeah, okay. Prince dies at 57. Big, big, his big uh, claim to fame, I guess, is Purple Rain. Purple Rain, right. Okay. These guys, uh, performers, don't they ever figure out about drugs? <laughs> I don't know. They can be fatal. <laughs> they can be. Woo. Okay. Okay, some flowers this morning. Caston's dis distinguished alumni, Richard Fincher, Donald St. Clair, uh, Lorraine Kirby, and Sheriff Chris Sayles. Yeah, congratulations to those four. Now, i gotta, I got to brag a little bit about the uh, first federal team, trivia team. Okay. They won. Good. And Congratulations. Yeah, we, we. You were on one of those teams, right? Well, yes, I was. So we beat you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, Jenny Shaw. Now, the name of our team is uh, Dollar and Cents. That makes sense. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Okay, Jenny Shaw. She's kind of leads the parade on that. Also, in in our. Team, we brought Don Gruner out of retirement. Oh, did you really? Yeah. yeah. Alice Oppo, uh, Kelly Franklin, uh, Ken Benzing, Ronnie Baldwin. We okay. brought him out. Okay. Uh, 
we kind of see it's kind of you got to get them loaded up and if you, <laughs> if you look at that profile it's a cross section well as brian knows too just throwing grudler in there makes all yeah. the difference in the world well it makes a difference i don't know about the world <laughs> okay okay in the money news right uh the dow was off yesterday uh and quite a bit but it's been going up every it day has. it's uh down to 17,982, it's been above 18,000. Most of the week, right? Heading, heading on. Volkswagen cut a deal yesterday. Billion dollar deal. Yeah, big deal. I, I know some people that uh, own those cars. They, they all, without exception, uh, not touching that car. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're gonna bring, bring them in, right. they'll fix them free. Right. Or, Right. Maybe even buy them back. I think I, they will yeah. in some cases. Yeah. Well, that's speak. And you know, if you see the Volkswagen ads, you yeah. know, it's they're back big time. Sure, they are. Which that's what you got to do. Yeah. You know, keep on trucking. <laughs> so, yeah, Volkswagen got the deal, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens down the line. Okay, at first federal we're open today till five o'clock. Tomorrow, eight thirty to noon. Our new ATM is always open, up and running. All right. First Federal family is wearing blue jeans today in support of our charitable organization of the month, the Fulton County Animal Adoption and Education Center. We had them on last week. Good cause. And uh, we contributed $1,000 to uh, that effort on celebrating uh, First Federal's 50th anniversary all year. Every month we have a favorite charity that uh, we donate, we the bank donate to, and then our uh, uh, First Federal family members, they contribute if they want to wear okay. blue jeans. Excellent. I contribute if I don't have to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, even though we've said this many times again, it's still important to repeat that this is a perfect time to buy a home or refinance right. your mortgage. There are still homeowners who have interest rates that are higher than they need to be. So stop in and see uh, Ben or John or go over to Winnemac and talk to Bill there and see where you might qualify for that. First Federal is FDIC insured on an equal housing lender and our NMLS number is 39 or 27. That is the correct number. Okay, yeah. now we get into the real meat of this show. Right. Melinda Klinger, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Melinda's uh, director of uh, Fulton County Hyster Historical Society, not Hysteric. <laughs> it's Hysterical every once in a while. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. and what's happening out there this weekend? This weekend we have our Redbud Trail Rendezvous. Um, people who are coming in and setting up tents already. There's probably about 30 camps out there. Um, it's a pre-1865 time period event. Um, so we include up through Civil War. Um, people will be selling uh, different items that are from that time period, doing demonstrations, um, and then we also have programs that happen. Um, Mark Gropp comes and plays bagpipe music for us every year. Um, Margo Moore will be there with her Travois dog. Travoy. Travoy. It's right. It's a Newfoundland um, dog that okay. pulls the, um, the Travoy behind it. Yeah. That would be a, like a search and rescue type dog. Okay. Um, Shirley, of course, will be telling about the Potawatomi history. Lois Mann from Locally will be doing some um, songs on her guitar. Um, Kim and Denny Sentnor will be doing um, Indian heritage and, and telling about some of the Indian dances and things that we do. And then Kim Hoover will be there Sunday from 1.30 to 2.30. Um, she has the Hoots for Howl at um, Star City, does wildlife rehabilitation. And so we always look forward to having her there and, and see which animals that she brings each year. Sometimes it might be a turtle and sometimes it might be an owl or, or whatever she has at that particular point. So All this fits right into Earth Day. Yes, it does. It does. We, um, Chief White Eagle used to go and, and do programs for different places in for Earth Day and, and it always seemed to fall at Redbud weekend, but that's that's a good thing. Um, the Redbuds, of course, are blooming good and out. Good. Thanks to this wonderful weather this week, and um, 
That hasn't always been the case. No, sometimes they're ahead of time and sometimes they're after, but... Um, but your timing's perfect. Yes, yes. You want to see uh, some beautiful red buds drive out. Yes. We have at our front gate up there, um, Leon Stewart had brought out a little sapling from his yard, and Leon volunteered there at the museum for years, and, and it's blooming beautifully. And um, I always think of him every time I see those blooming. That's neat. He was a neat guy. Yes. So, um, come on out. Some of the buildings will be actually open this weekend, but not all. Um, the depot, uh, we have the thing stored in there from our log cabin that has not been fixed yet. Um, so it will not be open. The cider mill, they're getting ready to start rebuilding. Um, lumber came in this week, actually. Um, the Kiwana Jail is still, of course, down. The round barn, we're getting closer to it being done. Um, they have to work on the upstairs floor. Um, with it being out exposed to the weather, of course, the floor buckled, and so we're going to have to go up there and put new boards down to make it so that it's safe for people to be in there. And then after our summer show, the power show in June, we will bring the equipment and things back in there and get everything set back up. So we still got a lot of work. <laughs> well, the uh, new round barn roof is certainly uh, shows off. It is. It's, it is it's, beautiful. It's uh, Fulton County's Golden Dome. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Jay Construction did a wonderful job of that roof, and it, and it does. It shines pretty up there, and and you have people from all over that comment and or drive by and, and sure. so many pictures and have been taken and and even um, Landon Smith and the telephone company and different ones have done the drone pictures and you can get on our web page or on our Facebook page and actually see the construction it was as things were going back together on that barn well you and your group are to be commended uh, on getting that back together and uh, it would have been a lot pretty easy just to take the insurance money and walk away right right but it's too much of Fulton County history right. to have allowed not to put it back and you know even the day of the storm last August the telephone or the telephone the telephone and the radios and TVs kept saying well how can you be so sure that this is going to happen I said because it will sure <laughs> you know you just had to have that attitude or else it wouldn't have happened okay uh, Melinda go, go back <coughs> to day one of the rendezvous uh, and tell us uh, how it started and a little history. The Redbud Trail, this is our 26th year, and we had the, the fall festival all the time, and, and the different participants kept saying, we'd like to have something in the spring so that we can be the first event of the year, get our stuff out, make sure we have everything in line and whatever, and, and actually, you know, cabin fever set in by that point, and they were, they were ready. So the first year we had it, we had it down along the river, and of course the red buds were blooming, <laughs> and it was a gorgeous weekend. And um, so we you started. Were around. You were around. There. Yes, I was around there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there for 35 years, so yeah, I was around for the first Red Bud. Um, wow. Anyway, we started that. Uh, we held it down at the woods for several years, um, and then we started having flooding in the spring. And the one year, the floods came up, and we had about 30 camps at the back. And I'm waking them up at 5 a.m. and saying, "Okay, we have to move." And when I got out about nine that morning, I was wading water to my knees. And I said, okay, this is too much. <laughs> we can't handle having this happen every year. So a few years back, we moved it up to the front to be up around the Living History Village and be able to accommodate having those buildings open so that people can see and still have a, a good event and, and um, still call it the Red Bud because we do have the Red Buds on the property. So. Now that's one of the one of three big events that you have out there each year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's the first one, obviously. It's the first one. You mentioned the historical And power then the show. power show is Father's Day weekend. Okay. And then the Trail of Courage is always held the third weekend in September, and that is our biggest festival. Okay. Okay, uh, tell us again uh, when this is and how to get there. Okay, the Red Bud is Saturday from 10 to 5, Sunday from 10 to 4. We're located right on US 31 and County Road 375 North, so just north of Tippecanoe River. Um, like I said, the museum and part of the buildings will be open this weekend, and all the vendors, and we'll be having buffalo burgers, ham and beans, cornbread, and the stew at the buffalo burger booth. Um, and then Mark Gropp will, of course, be there with his fudge. So okay. it's always lots of fun. A lot less hectic than Trail of Courage, <laughs> but <laughs> it is a lot of fun. Okay, now you, you've you always got projects going on up there. Uh, uh, what, what's, what's your 
in the next 12 months or 24 months, what are, you, what are we looking at? Besides getting all the buildings back up and going um, from the storm, of course, um, we're in desperate need of a storage building um, besides the museum itself. We have so much display inside our building that we need some additional to take the storage out and put it in a separate building. So we're wanting to get that done. That was actually on the burner before the storm happened, so it got put back on the back burner again. Well, no, what are you looking at, like a pole barn? A pole stuff? building, and then we can put storage in it. Um, we have a tractor and lawnmowers, that kind of stuff that we need to get in out of the weather. Um, besides the supplies that we use for the festivals, that kind of stuff, the historic items we try to keep inside the building, and that's that's the whole idea of, of that because of, of um, dampness and, and whatever. But um, but the extra storage of all the extra things that you have to have to do everyday business, sure. we need a place to put. And so that'll be back on the agenda um, as soon as we get I'll everything. get a pole barn builder to donate it. Well, we've, we've <laughs> gotten some pricing and, and that, but to get it donated so far, we haven't been successful at that. But um, Oh, you can sell that. <laughs> <laughs> we try. And, you know, each year, we'll go along with the Community Foundation, the Historic Society has two funds. Uh, one is the Hoffman Fund that was set up by the Hoffman family, and the other one was the Historic Society Fund. And Brian came out recently, and the Foundation presented us with our interest check for the year of $10,600. Wow, and he's a nice guy. <laughs> so we, that was established about the first year that they had the, the, the funds going, and each year it grows a little more. And, you know, that goes to help keep things rolling at the museum for the year. And I wish that we could have said, okay, this is going to go towards our fundraising for, for doing the restoration from the buildings, but unfortunately it has to go towards general operating. But anyway, but Mem it, was, it is nice to have. Memberships are available, too. Through yes, the, through the memberships are society. available. Sure. And any donations, memorials, that kind of thing, you know, we're always open to all that kind of thing. Okay. Brian, you gave him a check for 10-6? Ten, ten, yes. Uh, it came, interest. It, it came from two endowment funds that were set up by donors that um, were familiar with the Historical Society and wanted to make sure that it was here to enjoy for future generations. That's a better return than you, than you can get it for <laughs> federal. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Surely not. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Melinda and, Thank you. and Brian, for stopping by today. Our trivia this morning was, uh, which takes longer to decompose in, var uh, the, in the environment? Plastic bags, plastic beverage bottles, or aluminum cans? What do you think, Scotty? Aluminum cans. Plastic beverage bottles. I'm going with the bottles. That's my opinion. <laughs> You're right. Estimated 450 years. Now, I don't know how, wow. they, how they do that. <sighs> then it's plastic bags and then aluminum okay. cans. Okay. Then we talked about who's the uh, last uh, female, or the, actually the first, uh, on a uh, currency. Yeah. Paper currency. Yeah. Got an idea? No. I don't remember. Do you remember, no. Scott? No. Melinda? I have no. no idea. <laughs> Martha Washington. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I did not know that. Now, a little before that was uh, on the back of the bill. She was on the front. Okay. I don't know how you tell the difference between the back and the front, but Pocahontas was on the back. Ah, good choice. Melinda you know would like Pocahontas that Pocahontas was? I do, sir. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you. My cats are named Lewis and Clark. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. All right. Jane Goodall. Mm -hmm. you no, know she is? An author? Yeah. Sure. And She's an expert on chimpanzees. Ah. She says, now pay attention here. I am, I'm listening carefully. You cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Well said. Dick Belcher, thank you very much. Melinda, Brian, Scott, thank you all very much for being here in the first federal Thanks. program. Thank you. Buying your first home? Let the experts at First Federal Savings Bank help you through the process. At First Federal, all of their mortgage loans are serviced locally with payment options that are convenient for you. Their staff will work with you answering your questions and providing professional service. First Federal will even pay standard closing costs for qualifying first-time home buyers. Just another way, First Federal takes care of you, your local mortgage lender.